Welcome to a slightly different video to usual, but a very interesting video. This is the 2015 Tour de France Stage 10 up La Pierre Saint Martin, as you can see here, 15 kilometers at 17.4 percent. So, this is a super interesting climb because Chris Room won this by a minute and a half, and we have some power data. And how I've managed to get my hands on this data has been a tough one. But anyway, Strava Source is the way. So. We've got power on the bottom right with speed, cadence on the left, and gradient at the top. This is Robert Hessink's power day two, finished a minute and a half back on Chris Froome. He did 410 watts at 5.8 watts per kilo. Um, Normalised was like 420. Um, and at the beginning of these slopes, the numbers are stupid. So obviously, this is Bardet getting binned already. Sorry for the horrendous footage, but it is all I can get for Tour de France. 12 and a half kilometers to go and Barde is getting binned. They were doing 6.2 watts per kilo for like the first 20 minutes of this climb. And Chris Froome is flying. And the reason I want to make this video is it is actually in my most popular video of the top five supernatural performances by Chris Froome. I'll have a little link over there. But anyway, the reason I want to do a video on it is because the performance is so different to now. So this is Hessen going on the attack early on, which we're going to speak about in a bit. But it's very different because the gaps are just so large. Like, you could come top 10 GC-wise finishing 17 and a half minutes down in this tour. And in my opinion, the level has actually stayed the same at the very top. But the difference is that there's an increase in the mediocre level and that people don't, you know, get bin this early. So 11.4k to go, Movistar are climbing. The power data, unfortunately, is a little bit off. It's very hard on this dodgy software that I had to use because of many other things. But I can't use common verb, so software's a bit dodgy. But this is Hessen on the front. It's a pretty steep climb on some parts. Um, I'm not sure how accurate the speed is because sometimes it seems to go down real low. Um, but on this part, obviously, as you can see before, it's a super fast part. Um, so Movistar is still setting up tempo. Um, and Hessen, I think, in my opinion, makes a mistake going really early. Um, but you can still see he's doing absolutely stellar turn. Like, I mean, it's, it's just hard to sort of realize that, like, Pino's getting spat. He must be like, what is, what is this pace going on about? Like, he's getting binned. He does, you know, redeem himself, wins the stage uh, on out the Wes on stage 20. Vincenzo Nibali also wins the stage as well. Um, the reigning champion, obviously, having won the 2014 Tour de France. But again, it's like... It's really interesting that just the differences in even just five years of how races have ridden and the level. Like now, let's say Jumbo Visma wanted to get Roglic to win. If they just went on the front, um, there's a lovely Balco Monomo in the best can, best uh, bike uh, style in the world. Um, but if Jumbo Visma went on the front now and just drilled it. So Rafael Vars also attacked to Robert Hessink. Now we've got Wout Pools on the front. You know what the deal is. But if they did this sort of a tempo, like there'd be loads of people left. Like even in Angleru, the level is so similar now that actually you can't do this. Um, but we've now, you know, skipped quite a lot of A4 at 8.7 kilometers to go. Hessing's just binned Rafa Valls, um, who's riding for Lamprey Merida in a beautiful pink kit, which I, I love to see. Um, but yeah, with eight and a half kilometers to go, it's steep a little bit here, 10k an hour or so, 390 watts. So not not crazy, but like the power obviously is only one second, so it does hop around a lot. Um, the cadence for the climb that he used was uh, about uh, 78, 80 cadence, so not not crazy, but you know, not not also super low either. Um, you can see Louis Mike is in the back of that shot for MTN Quebecer, and Hessink is like, oh no, I've made a big mistake because okay, this climb isn't um, it's not shallow, but you know, like getting a draft on this sort of um, speed is definitely helpful. Um, and there's uh, one of the Yates' brothers, I'm not sure exactly who it is, but there's Pierre Hollande, he finished 17 and a half minutes back, but did finish top 10. We've got Pistolero, um, who had ridden and won the Giro d'Italia in 2015, um, so pretty successful season for him already, but he was trying to do the double, but obviously that's pretty hard. You've got Valverde there for Quintana, this is like peak Quintana, um, and really, you know, super, super good. We get a little bit of cutout here, but we go back to Robert Hessen on the front, drilling it big time, um, and he just... Like, this effort is something that I think Hessink and people like them who are really tall and lanky are just so good at. Like, a 40-minute effort, they can just, like, they can't follow the attacks, but just going one pace for all is just what they love to do. Um, I still think, though, maybe he could have got a better result but um, if he'd stayed on the path. But anyway, Garrett Thomas is now on the front, and he means business. We've got TJ Van Garden in, um, riding for BMC. Pestolero is about to get spat with about 5.7k to go. I think that says. Hard to see. Richie Port's now on the front, and... Uh, Hessink has now got caught by everyone. And this is the point where you're just like, okay, fair enough. Like they've ridden, you know, 6.2, 6 watts per kilo up until this point. 
Garrett Thomas is there with like Pierre Roland and Jurgen Vandenbroek and uh, Valverde. And then, you know, Froome and Quintana are just, and Paul are all just a level ahead of everyone else. They can ride the 6.26 watts per kilo pace just for 40 minutes. I mean, it was a very flat stage as you saw at the beginning, but still it's just an unbelievable performance. Um, obviously, Chris Froome said that, you know, he did 5.8 watts per kilo, but obviously that's, I, I think, is incorrect considering uh, Hessink did that. Um, and that's Hessink has lost a lot of weight in the last bit because obviously his weight is from when he last changed on Strava. But even so, I would say it was more than 5.8 on this particular day um, based on this. But anyway, as we round this corner, you can see the gap that's happened already. Um, these guys are more diesels like, you know, Hessink and Van Garden. So, you know, just keep the steady, steady tempo. And this is when Chris Froome just launches it. And like, this is where I think having the power data is really amazing because you can see the numbers have like been consistently 400 to 420. Like, like obviously <laughs> they go down now, but you know what I mean? Like, they've been super high and the, abil the ability to attack with so long to go. We've now got five kilometers to go. You've never seen this now. You never, ever see anyone attacking with five kilometers to go and, and sticking it, especially in the tour. OK, Giro, maybe you can say Piancavallo. You had uh, Jay Hindley uh, and Kelderman and Gagan Hart. But you know what I mean? And the Giro, to be fair, was as exciting as this. But in the tour, you just don't see it anymore. Like people thought Sky were boring, but they were pretty interesting compared to what's happening now. And I, I think, OK, yeah, it's tactics, but I also think the level is a lot higher now. You've got people, you know, and I think is that uh, Vincenzo Nibali. Um, but you can see the numbers still by Hessen is super, super strong and still finish a minute and a half down. Um, and Froome obviously was on a really, really good day. But I think also like Quintana was there as well. And in my opinion, like that level is still the level you have to be at to win the tour. I don't think that's changed that much, but I just think the level in between. Um, but if you look at the sort of, this is peak Froome in my opinion. 2015 Froome was peak Froome. OK, yeah, maybe he didn't put a huge amount of time on a lot of the other stages in the, in the outs. He rode defensively. But this performance here is, is peak for him because in order to put such a big time gap into your rivals, as we've seen now, like I think people understand it. It's unbelievable. He's already put 40 seconds into it. I mean, that acceleration was was vicious. Um, but it also shows that Quintana was like right on the limit. So Quintana maybe is keeping a similar pace, but maybe slightly blown up. But Chris Room is, is going back. Here's Garrett Thomas. And I mean, like. We're now going to skip to the end because there's nothing much happened. We don't get too much of Hessink, but Chris Froome wins the stage. Um, and then you're going to see all the time gaps. Richie Port obviously comes in second. All the French doping conspiracy theorists were saying this is, you know, all the rest of it. Um, they were they were not well loving this day in some sense because they could um, chat all the stuff they want to talk about. Um, but anyway, like, I mean, it was a it was a crazy, crazy performance. Um, and you you can see like. That I think just the difference in five years is, is unbelievable uh, and the power data is obviously unbelievable. So before I leave you, if you've got any races that are on YouTube and people have a Strava power file, let me know because I'm happy to do this. I think it adds a lot. I want to do some spring classics. Um, I want to do um, Gilbert's got a pretty good attack he did in, um, in uh, what's it called? Three days of the Panna in 2017, I think it was. No, maybe 16. That's pretty good. So I, I would like to um, do a video on that. So I'm, I need to find a powerful file. Um, and once I find it, I'll um, I'll put that up because it, it's a really, really good race. And I, I believe it's on YouTube. Um, but yeah, I was trying to do some uh, British national series as well, but I couldn't really. They were too hard to do. Um, but also, before you leave, if anyone knows how to convert a TCX file to a fit file, please let me know. If anyone can do that, that would be a huge, huge, huge favor. And it would make making these videos significantly easier. Um, and also just like timing it up, it would be slightly more accurate because you can see here, like the power data is obviously wrong. Like he's finished the climb and stuff like, you know, it's maybe 10, 15 seconds out. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy and um, we will see you in the next one.